Data Flow Diagram, DFD, Level 1. Now, this might be self-explanatory, but a Level 1 Data Flow Diagram provides greater detail than a Level 0 Diagram, as essentially they display each process involved with the system as an individual circle. So a Level 0 had one circle representing the whole system. In this case now, we're breaking it up into multiple circles to represent the sub-processes of a system. A level one DFD also has a shape for data stores to represent storage locations where data is sent to or retrieved from, such as a specific database. So what we're gonna take a look at firstly is these different symbols that make up the level one data flow diagram. So firstly, we have one that's exactly the same and that's of the external entity, an element that provides input data into the system or, and or retrieves information back from the system. So can represent people, other systems or data sources from other places, okay, or products, okay, that are used to either obtain data or send information to. Next, we have the process. Now, as said, in the level zero level, we only ever had one, but now we're at a level one level, we now have multiple process symbols, okay, and what we're using them for is showing each sub process of my system in fact, how they are actually manipulating the data in different ways in order to turn that data into information as per the purpose of the system. Thirdly, we have the flow line once again, which is illustrating the movement of data from one external entity to another process. And the way it goes is obviously we can have multiple external entities, but Flow lines don't go between external entities or between external entities and data stores. They need to go through processes because the processes are the steps where things are happening. And they're often labeled with verb-like words because they're all doing things to the data. So the flow lines flow from external entities into a process as well as between processes showing the data being sent around and how it's being transformed by processes okay, into a form that ultimately will be sent to an external entity in a required format. And then finally, we have the data store symbol, a location where data is saved to or retrieved from, such as a database. Okay, so they interact with the system for saving data for a later time and then retrieving it back when it needs to be referred to or updated, okay, as a data source, such as the database as stated. So let's look at some of these key principles now related to a level one DFD. And firstly, we have the fact that it breaks down the main processes that were contextualized in the level zero DFD into now the system specific sub processes, thus involving multiple circles now. Secondly, the diagram highlights the journey of data between the main processes within a system showing how these different processes interact with each other as it's showing structure and logic in that, but also showing how the data is changing between each process in order to create information for external entities. Thirdly, these level one DFDs have those data store symbols showing where data is sent to and retrieved from, either for current processing at the time, but also saving data for future use so it can be referred to once again through the, the processes at a later date for later processing. And then finally, the data flows between processes and data stores represent the transformations and movement of data within the system. Okay, and so just remember when illustrating the system as well, okay, as mentioned before, we data must travel between external entities through processes. Okay, the only symbol that can connect to the symbol of the same type is processes, the circles, okay? So let's illustrate that now. So I'm gonna have a look at a sample system, okay, with no context given to it, just logical use of the symbols. So we'll start off with my external entity. I only have one in this scenario. They're gonna enter data into the system and process one is gonna do something to that data. Once process one has done something to that data, it might've been just how the data was collected by the system, it will then send it to process two. The data format that it's being sent in is written on the flow line and then process two is gonna do something else to that data. Now, process two might require more data to do this process that is outside of what process one sent it. So where's it gonna get this data from? Most likely a data store, okay? It will send data to the data store and retrieve data back from the data store and then maybe update that data and then save it to the data store. But process two requires the access to the data store such as a database in order to complete its process. Once this process is completed, and it might have been conducting some sort of calculation or figuring out some sort of process that need to happen to data for the actual external entity, it then can be sent to process three. So 
the data that's being sent along that flow line has clearly transformed from what happened in process two. And now process three might be about turning it into a format that is required by the external entity. So you might put it into a receipt format or an invoice format or some sort of web-based format for the external entity to read. And thus the final step is whatever format it puts into, that information which will be written on the flow line is sent back to the external entity, hopefully satisfying their needs of the system. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of a level one data flow diagram that essentially we are now gone up from the level zero diagram in that we've taken the system and blown it up into its sub processes requiring multiple circles. Also new to this type of diagram is the data store symbol as a place where data is saved to and can be retrieved from at a later date, helping support the processes here. All the processes can be linked to each other by arrows, but external entities and data stores can't link directly to each other. They must go through processes in order to follow the logic of the diagram because the processes are the things that are making things happen and are often written with verb symbols in them showing what they're actually doing to data when it reaches them there. So I hope this is giving you an understanding of what's happening in a level one data flow diagram.